Sunday School, August 22nd, 2021. Don't let discouragement stop you from serving God. So God calls us to serve him and to serve our fellow man. But things discourage us. Getting tired, feeling threatened, having a loss of confidence, feeling like we have no support. Today we're talking about Elijah and how he got scared and ran, but he listened to God, he regrouped, and got back to work. So sometimes you got to take a break, listen to God, and get back to work. So last week we talked about how Elijah called down fire from heaven. How he had defeated the 450 prophets of Baal, and the people took the prophets of Baal and killed them. Then Elijah prayed, and the rain returned after years of not raining. And he ran to Jezreel, where they have following in his chariot. Well, as soon as Ahab got back to Jezreel, he told his evil wife Jezebel what had happened to those prophets. And of course, she was most displeased about that. So she sent a messenger to Elijah, basically saying that I swear to you, Elijah, by this time tomorrow, you're going to be just as dead as those prophets. And the Bible says he got scared and he ran for his life. Even having that high mountaintop experience, that great victory in the Lord, was not enough to reassure him in that moment when he came face to face with just pure evil and feared for his life. So Elijah ran all the way from the northern part of northern Israel all the way through there, all the way through Judah to the southern border of Judah, the town of Beersheba. He stayed there briefly and then headed out into the desert wilderness. Elijah went for about one day's journey into the desert and sat under a tree. King James says it was a juniper tree but if you look at the original Hebrew and the modern translations, it's a broom brush tree. Here's a picture of a broom brush tree it grows in that part of the world. He sat under that tree, he fell asleep, and then he was awakened sometime later by an angel who had cooked a meal for him. You know, sometimes people have beautiful experiences with angels, and angels appear several different ways several different times. They almost always have a message. And every time they have a mission. Now we don't know what this angel looked like, but he didn't have a whole lot to say. He basically hits Elijah and says, get up and eat. And that's it. So Elijah gets up, he eats the bread, he drinks the water, sits back down under the tree and goes back to sleep. And then sometime later, the angel woke up Elijah again with only slightly more to say. Get up, eat, the journey is too hard for you. So we read here in 1 Kings chapter 19, where the angel says in his second little message, the journey is too great for thee. So he was supplying him with rest, food, and water that would hold him for a long time. Indeed, the journey of life, our mission, is indeed too great for us. Without God, God's help, God's provision, God's angels, we wouldn't be able to do it. But we're grateful that he and his angels and his provision are always there. So on the strength of that heavenly bread, Elijah traveled 40 days into the Sinai Peninsula, a place called Mount Horeb. 
in the book of Exodus, they refer to this as being on the backside of the desert. This mountain and the wilderness around it are also referred to as Mount Sinai and the Sinai Desert. This is the place where the burning bush and the voice of God spoke to Moses and where sometime later God spoke again to Moses to give him the Ten Commandments and all the law. And now God had a message for Elijah. And there upon Mount Horeb, Elijah found a cave. And once he had taken shelter into that cave, God began to speak to him. And he says, What are you doing here, Elijah? Now, like Elijah, even the best of us can get scared, depressed, discouraged, a number of other things that bring us down. That's o That's okay. And God is very understanding. But God does not want that to become a permanent state of affairs where we never serve him again. So what are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah says, Well, I've been very zealous for you, Lord God of hosts, the heavenly armies. But the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They've thrown down the altars. They've killed the prophets. And I am the only one left, and they're trying to kill me. So Elijah felt surrounded by an overwhelming evil in his society. Feeling like everyone has turned against God. What, what do I do? And he was feeling alone. Because he was the only one taking a stand. Now, notice as you read these verses in chapter 19, that God does not get into a debate or a discussion, not even a lecture. He basically just listens to all that Elijah has to say, his lament. And then he says, okay, Elijah, come to the edge of the cave. I want, to, I want to show you something. The Lord passed by. A strong wind tore the mountains, broke the rocks into pieces. But the Lord was not in the wind. And there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after that, there was a fire. But God was not in the fire. But after the fire, a still, small voice. So Elijah covered his face and went just outside of the cave to listen to the still, small voice. And again, the Lord asked, Elijah, what are you doing here? And Elijah repeated all that stuff he had said before. Same complaints. This time, instead of getting into an argument or putting on another demonstration, God simply gives him a set of instructions. He gives him a job to carry on. The first instruction was to go to Damascus and anoint Hazael to be the king of Syria. Now, the Syrians had a lot of respect for the prophets of the one true God. And they would have even more respect during the time of Elisha, who we'll talk about in a minute. Then, anoint Jehu to be the next king of Israel. The country of Israel needed new leadership, and God was getting ready to shake things up. And then knowing that Elijah would not always be around, he told Elijah to appoint his successor, a young farmer by the name of Elisha. And as the years went on, Elisha became an even more powerful prophet than Elijah was. So it's important that we have some action, some influence on choosing the leadership in our country. 
It's also important that we be training other people to carry on the work of God when we no longer can. Oh, and by the way, Elijah, I still have 7,000 prophets in Israel who have not compromised with Baal. This had to be a surprise and somewhat encouraging to Elijah. So while he was not the only prophet, it was just he was the one who was always out in front and speaking up, whereas the others had not been making their presence known. There's a lot more Christian people in the United States right now than it might seem. It's just that, for whatever reason, we're just not able to get our voice or get our actions together to serve God. So let us pray for courage to overcome our discouragement. Three action points. Number one, pray to see everything from God's perspective and not just your own. You'll be far less discouraged. Number two, thank the people who have encouraged you and helped keep you going. Finally, recommit to what God has called you to do in this life and then get about doing it. It's amazing what some things will do for you, like getting away for a while, eating a good meal, having a visit from an angel, even if the angel doesn't have much to say, taking a long walk, having a talk with the Lord, seeing the Lord's amazing work, and listening to his voice. And then it's amazing to see what happens when you get about doing God's work once again. It is my prayer today, and this will serve as our benediction, that we will have the courage to keep going no matter what.